in B and B flop houses, poems I wrote, stuffed into damp pockets of a donkey jacket coat, poems about building sites, too much beer, being far from home, despair and fear. I read them to comrades who all nodded their heads, then went back to sleep with one room with eight beds. I read them to lads who for the first time sat and listened to words, their rhythm, their rhyme. Folkestone, Dover, Hastings, Brighton and Hove. I wrote poems by a flickering camping gas stove describing my feelings, my way of life. Cut straight to the bone like a Stanley craft knife. The channel tunnel, dumpers and cranes, concrete bains, bruises, hangovers, shame. Days without eating, nights full of drinking, hours on the shovel, digging without thinking. Then along came the books. I started reading at night, discovered poetry by wind up torchlight. I read more and more, captivated by books charms as my workmates pursued barmaids at the King's Arms. Then one day, McNamara, <laughs> with his belly full of beer, came looking for me, called me a queer. Ooh, reading and writing, it's not for the likes of us. I agreed begrudgingly with this back end of a bus. He helped me gather up my words and my books into a couple of barrels like scrap metal crooks. We wheeled them over so we burnt the pallets, electric cable for the copper and broken slab layer mallets. They went on the embers which began to ignite and from my caravan window I watched them burn through the night and as they glowed I felt pity, not anger, at the inbred ignorance of this 18 stone gang who believed words were impotent compared to the fist. Our lives were mapped out, digging trenches, getting pissed. But the books had given me hope that life was for living, not dying at 60 when your body just gives in, knees knackered, back broken, knuckles dead with rheumatics from working outside in all weathers, holding hammers, pneumatic. Days later, on a portaloo, McNamara settled down with a copy of Mayfair and a hard-on to pound. He never smelt the petrol, mesmerised by big breasts, and pleasured himself quickly across the bottom of his vest, sparked up a roly, relieved and relaxed, thinking of Friday's time sheets to be faxed. <laughs> we heard the explosion, looked to the sky, saw Doctor Who's TARDIS go flying by, but it wasn't the time, Lord, just a burning plastic box with a melting 18 stone ganger still holding this cock. McNamara was identified by the fillings in his teeth and buried by the council just outside Haywood's Heath. If I hadn't continued writing, McNamara's threats defied. No one would know about him or the way that he died. Books and words are everything. They free the mind and they lift the anchor. And let me tell your tale, McNamara, how you lived and died a wanker.